Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Playing in the Sandbox podcast. I am Tammy J. Bond, your host, and thrilled to have you join me today as we dive into a topic that I think you all are going to want to get a hold of. They are the 10 things that your employees ought to never wonder, be curious about, or concerned about when they work with you or for you. These are the things that actually become little tiny trips along the stepping stone process of an employee journey, and they become huge mountains to overcome when they're not properly dealt with. And worse, there are some on this list of 10 that you're gonna hear today in our episode that actually have a larger ripple effect because they go beyond the individual and it goes out to the organization and it causes strife and it causes confusion and it causes a breakdown in the way that we effectively work together and collaborate and communicate all things that are important in leadership today. So join me inside the sandbox, kick off your shoes, grab a pen and paper, get ready to take some notes because I got a list of 10 things that you're going to want to check in with your employees about to see if there's any worries or concern or lack of clarity on that list for them. And you're going to want to do your job and your responsibility as leader and get it cleaned up fast. I'll see you inside the sandbox. All right, we are talking all around the keys, right? The key things that team members and employees should never be left wondering about in the workplace, right? Leader, it is your responsibility to solve for these. It's not your employee's responsibility to ask for these because if you do your job up front in onboarding and getting everything ready for them, guess what? These questions aren't going to be an issue. If you think you've done this list of 10 things, great time for you to go back and revisit it and do it quickly and swiftly and get everybody on the same page and aligned. Here you go. Here are the key things, the 10 keys that members of your team, your employees should never be left wondering. All right. Number one, they ought to never wonder about their role and their responsibilities. And why does that matter? Well, because understanding the role <laughs> and what their responsibilities are not only prevents overlap and confusion, but it ensures efficiency and accountability. It also ensures they understand what they are responsible for. And that is an important one. It helps your employees to know what is expected of them as well as for them to do and what their opportunities are within the environment that they work within. So key number one, your employees ought to never wonder about what their role and responsibilities are. And you might be thinking, Tam, duh, right? Like that's a no brainer. Well, that's okay that you say that. And I have been in many environments and very recently had the opportunity to hear about a company where roles and responsibilities were not clearly defined. We thought based on title, job description, duty statement that they were, but when it came down to getting the work done, there was a lot of blurry lines and there was double workflow workload happening between different people, which is a waste of resources for the company. Why would you do that? So I am a big believer in a touch at once, right? Like I, I go through my email in the same way. Like I handle it in the immediacy. I don't let things linger and double tap, double touch. I don't want the team doing that either as much as possible. Yes, there are times we got to go back after edits are made, but if there are things on your desk or for your team that can be moved through efficiency, uh, an efficiency checkup, do that with them. As you are defining with them or refining with them, better word, their role and responsibilities as it currently is needed for the team. Understanding, and I think it's important for our team members to understand too, sometimes our roles and responsibilities shift and it is our opportunity, our our responsibility to check in on that. But you want to make certain that number one, Your employees are never wondering about their role and responsibilities leading into number two, company goals and company vision. Now you can have vision and values on the wall all you want, but if you, I walk into your company and I ask, what's the vision of your company? What are the goals? What are the sales goals? What are the uh, client statistic goals? What are the outputs that your team are supposed to be doing based on your company goals? And they can't answer that. You have a problem, friend. 
So they ought to never be wondering what the company goal is, goals are, and vision is. Why that matters? Because knowing the bigger picture motivates your employees. It has an impact. It motivates and aligns their work with the company. And that is what drives that intrinsic motivation. I know what I'm doing has an impact, has a bigger play in the bigger picture. And why do I know that? Because I know what the company's goals are and I know what the company vision is. That's important. It reduces anxiety. It reduces uncertainty about job performance. Okay. Or I should say more about purpose and direction. So performance and expectations. Why does that matter? <laughs> well, because clear performance expectations help employees understand um, their responsibilities, their, how their work is evaluated, how they're going to get a promotion, how they're going to get a raise. Do I sound a little sarcastic? I am a little bit. Why? Because I think we're doing a huge disservice as leaders when we're not being clear with our performance expectations. And if they change, we also have a problem with letting people flounder in the change instead of clarifying with expectation what that performance is to be or is to become. Or we make a worse assumption that people know. <laughs> and I'm telling you, they probably 100% do not all know. If they do, high five. I'm high fiving you. Good job. And it's your opportunity to do a health checkup with your team. Let's do a little checkup and ask them what they understand their performance expectations are. I promise you it will have an, uh, it will improve the productivity of your team and it will increase their trust in you as a leader. Number three. Our employees should never be wondering about their opportunities for growth and development. Why is that, Tam? Well, because an awareness for growth opportunities keeps your employees engaged and invested in YOU and their careers. It helps you to retain the top talent that you've spent a lot of money trying to get, and it helps build, build up that continuous uh, improvement culture that is so important as well. We want our people continuously improving and continuously and growing that if we want that, then we've got to do our part to provide the opportunity for them. Okay, here we go. Number five, feedback and communication channels. Why does that matter? Well, because open communication ensures that employees can voice their concerns, that they can quickly get to resolving issues that they might have, ask questions that they might have, and receive timely feedback. That's our job as leaders to be opening that up. Now, frustration for Tammy is that when I open those up and then people aren't giving feedback, I call that, y'all don't, I don't want to hear crickets, right? And isn't that funny because crickets are really loud, but yet it's like that silence is deafening. I don't want to hear crickets when I ask. So it, even if it's that, you know what, I don't have any feedback. Actually, things are great right now. No, I understand what the, ch the communication channels are. Just answer the question, right? But if I haven't built that trust up, which is part of that feedback and communication, that open feedback and communication channels, then when issues do come up, people can tend to hide from it. And I've seen that. I've seen that myself. I've experienced it myself and I've seen it in teams around me. So it's important that your people understand where to go to give and get feedback as well as communicate. Super important. And you want to revisit this number five one often, by the way. Number six, company policies and procedures. Why is that important? Well, because um, they're what direct the outflow of the work, the outputs that you have. It's helping people to understand the policies and procedures to ensure compliance. That's very important. And in some very regulated fields, obviously it's very necessary and we know that, but let's not just assume because we're not regulated, it's not important. If someone isn't meeting your expectation and you have a policy or in place around dress code and they're coming to work or they're going out to a client event and they're not dressed appropriately, then you want to make sure you understand what the dress code is. Okay. So that is a reminder to revisit policies and procedures and ensure that people know that. A lot of times we'll see people will assign a behavior that people have and um, in the workplace 
that isn't working for us, but it's actually because they don't know the policy and procedure and we made an assumption that they do. And oh, by the way, if you just gave them an onboarding as a new employee and you gave them a big handbook and you're expecting them to read everything, if it's not tied to how that shows up and what that model is modeled like in the workplace and what those behaviors look like in the workplace and we're revisiting it, I guarantee it's in a drawer in a file cabinet somewhere or on their hard drive somewhere and they actually never even read through it. Even though they signed for it does not mean you're employees know all of the policies and procedures. Doesn't mean they understand them. Doesn't mean they know how to apply them in their job. It's your responsibility as the leader, right, to create them and to make certain that everybody is following them. It also gives us fair treatment and consistency across all departments and all individuals within the organization instead of it, you know, when we get a misalignment on policies and procedures, there's a whole bunch of mess that can show up. So let's make sure we are all aligned and we're asking that regularly. And oh, by the way, it's not just HR's responsibility. Let's just say that. Policies and procedures alignment is not just HR's responsibility. It's theirs to onboard and give them. It's your responsibility to make sure we stay aligned to them and we're following them. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Give my HR friends a little bit of a high five. All right, number seven, recognition and reward systems. They should never be wondering how they're going to get rewarded or a promotion or a raise because knowing and uh, how and when they're going to be recognized and rewarded motivates people and it reinforces positive behavior and it contributes to job satisfaction and loyalty. Why is that important? Because that all relates to retention. All of it relates to retention. Number eight, they ought to never be wondering about job security or company stability. I was with a group a few weeks ago and some feedback came out that there were folks that were worried about the stability of the company. And instead of addressing it, the leadership was like, well, that's dumb. Of course, we're fine. We wouldn't be here if we weren't fine. Well, that's not what your employees are thinking. And so they're all wondering. This also comes into play if you have to or when you get to and you have any kind of termination or layoffs, you want to make certain that you're reiterating the job security and the company stability to your employees because that also is a time when people tend to talk. And when employees are unsure about job security, they experience an undue amount of stress and it decreases their productivity. Being transparent about how the company is doing performance and stability wise helps maintain morale and trust. And we know, and we have seen it, and there are so many things written about it, about the value and importance of trust and how it impacts morale in your organization. You want to build trust? Yes, be transparent and talk about the stability of the company and talk about it frequently if you need to, or ask people to come to you, offer them to come to you with questions if they have it. The ninth one, the ninth area that no employee ought to ever wonder about is workplace culture and values. Why? Well, because a clear understanding of the workplace culture and values actually helps your employees integrate it helps them to align. It helps them to um, understand where their behavior and how their behavior supports the work environment, right? It's, it's important that they know what the company standards are and how their behavior fosters that cohesiveness that you're looking for within the culture and the values of the workplace, period. Yes, I believe in individual values are important. And then I I believe team values. What do we value as a team? Who do we want to be known, seen, and celebrated for? Or what do we want to be known, seen, and celebrated for? That's all part of building that culture and that value and values in the team. And that's so impactful for a healthy environment. And number 10, here's your number 10, friends. Ready? They have to never be running, worrying or concerned or wondering about resources and what support is available for them. It ought to be so clear for them to know what resources and support is available to help them perform their jobs. And you notice I've even changed my language, or maybe you haven't, but I'll tell you I've changed my language. I used to say a lot, you know, how can I be of service? How can I support you in succeeding? And now I've said, I've changed it to what resources? Because I can't be all things to all people and I can't be all places. 
And if I'm out traveling and doing client work and my team is working in their location at the office, they need to know they've got resources available when Tammy's not available. So I've changed that to what resources do you have or what resources do you need to efficiently and effectively do this task, right? And so when we know that and, and, and our employees have that sense of, of what resources and support is available, it, it actually helps to improve their own efficiency and it reduces their frustration because they know where to go for the supports and the help. And that's all that they really want. They just want to know. This is just all about open flow of communication because we want to ensure that our employees have the clarity in these critical areas, these 10 areas that I, that I listed for you so that we are increasing, enhancing, and even maintaining a productive, engaged, and satisfied workforce. Our, our people need us to. Uh, we want to, to have that satisfied workforce of employees, that people that are, that, that we've created that transparent environment and that supportive environment where our employees can thrive and contribute to your success as a company, as a team. And that's ultimately, you know, when people come in, when, when, when you get new employees, they're so excited to contribute. They're excited to be a part of something new until all of a sudden they get in and they see all the cracks in your sidewalk, but nobody's talking about it. So let's be willing to not have them be confused on these 10 areas, right? Because here's what I'll tell you in a really bold way. If your team, if you, yeah, I'll say it this way. Your team isn't underperforming because they're unskilled or because they don't care or because they are even the wrong fit necessarily. More likely than not, they're underperforming because they don't know what you want from them. And when they don't know what you want from them, they don't know how to perform at that level. They're going to be broken on the inside and on the outside. And that's how it shows up. And last and final little thought, this fun little statistic I'll leave in your path here. An engaged employee is 21% more productive, yet many leaders overlook the simple act of transparent communication. And why that matters, why that's important? Well, we listed it off up in the 10 that we gave you. When they're concerned about their stability or the company's stability, they don't know where to go for feedback, they're not sure where their growth opportunity, worse, they don't know how they can get a raise, your employees ought to never worry about that because if you've actually done your part and, and given them the clarity of how at number seven, that recognition and reward system, that includes that promotional opportunity, that includes that next level raise that they're looking for, that they might want, that they don't have yet. Your opportunity is to be clear with this list and give them what they want, what they need, so that they can be productive for you. Regularly communicating with them, that opportunity is so important. All right, friend, that's it for today. Make it a great day. Thank you so much for joining me in the sandbox today as we talked about your people and all the things that they should never be wondering about. I know that you took some great notes in there of those 10 items, and I want to make certain that you know I'm a resource with further questions. If you have any, you can head on over to bondgroupenterprises.com and you can message me there. You can also go to LinkedIn, connect with me there, ask me your questions, give me your insights. And if there's something that I'm missing of the 10 things that your employees should never be wondering about, please add them in the comments comments wherever you listen to this content. My hope is that you're leaving with some great new tools, tips, and strategies to navigate your leadership, to navigate your team communication and your team leadership, as well as that next opportunity for you to have an engaging and bold conversation with your team. And hey, friend, it would mean so much to me if you'd share this episode with a friend or a colleague that you feel could really benefit from the content that we shared here today. You know, third-party affirmations go a long way in today's world economy, and I would be honored if you shared the value that you gained from spending time in the sandbox today with someone else. Make sure that you subscribe where you listen to powerful content. Go over to YouTube, subscribe to our channel there so that you're always getting the latest information from the sandbox in your inbox. 
Now remember, friend, leadership is not something that you're born with. It's something that you grow into. And I want to thank you for taking time to grow into your next level of leadership in the sandbox today. Make it a great day. God bless. Thank you.